Hello everyone, I'm Silver Raptor, and welcome to another War Game Red Dragon video. Today for you I have another 10v10, which I will actually be playing with Bubble Box. Uh, and uh, it's just something uh, quick uh, to show you, and uh, I think that this was uh, sufficient enough entertainment. So I'm actually, uh, the reason why it's going to be interesting gameplay is I'm actually playing with a Soviet Marine deck on the map Floods, but even though Floods have all this water right here on the left, there's actually no sea shipping lane. So you could be asking yourself, why did uh, why did you play a marine deck? Well, marine decks are not just about ships. Yes, they get extra ships, and that's important, but they also get extra infantry, and uh, I'm, I, there was another thing that they also got I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but I play my marine deck just to have a little bit of fun. It is a 10v10, so things are a bit hectic at the start. So as you can see, at the very top, a huge dap rush by the enemy. So they shot down any helicopters that were going across from our allies. And they've got some planes up in the back line as well. So that push kind of got stopped with the helicopters. But as for me, I had dropped off my command squad here. I'm capturing Ogla. And with all of these vehicles, I'm going to just kind of push my way and try to secure this area. And I expected to basically hold the line here at the waterway. But Moose has decided to go full speed ahead. And with some Mi-24Vs and Ka-52s, he's basically chasing off these Hornets. And shooting them down. So see, upon seeing that, I realized, well... I can keep pushing up with my KA-29. If we can get across this uh, waterway here, then we can uh, try to see about getting Nicholas and Sheridan. And if we get a foothold, we can then push on to Gregory. Uh, my KA-29 has some uh, two-man sniper squad Spetsnaz in. And they're just going to go into this and spot for any enemies, to any reinforcements the enemy might send as Moose is making his massive push across. Now, he would have probably done better of splitting across his Mi-24Vs to avoid splash damage, but that is fine. He also dropped some infantry and is stopping the counter push here. So he definitely has their attention uh, over here on the left. Now, over here on the right, um, they're basically, uh, my allies have run into a longbow and they're kind of stopped and bunched up, but they should be planning on pushing ahead soon. And uh, we can speed up a little bit. Despite that uh, failed, uh, all those helicopters shot down at the start, my uh, the allies in the center are really doing a good job at getting into Jot, which is pretty impressive if you think about it. They do ha The enemy does have a pretty good foothold with automatics and rangers spotting, but this town loaded up the bear with infantry are not going to... Uh, it's going to be hard to retake this. Meanwhile, in the back line here, my KA-29 is taking on some daps with its minigun. It managed to shoot down one dap before being shot down by some hornets. And the enemy managed to muster enough air defense that it looks like Moose is going to be cleaned up here before long. And his CV has unfortunately going to be spotted by this dap. Daps, of course, have a auto cannon and a minigun. But, uh, actually... I, I take it back. They actually shoot it down. So, uh, well done, Moose. You've, we're getting us some extra points in the meantime for the rest of us. Meanwhile, over here on the right, as you can see, the Allies have finally moved forward. And they're starting to get to this forested area. Now, on floods, this forested region generally tends to be very, very contested. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of places to hide and widespread out. You can't see a lot of troops. And so, there are... Uh, it's really hard to make sure that you have everyone and people can sneak around. So this is going to be a, we're going to definitely have a lot of uh, effort uh, spent on this area. Um, the middle is pushing pretty well, actually. Uh, TU-80UM, T-80Us, uh, APCs leading the front. They're actually making quite uh, good ground despite being bombed and artilleried heavily. And then over here on the left, I start trying to get my troops across, but I realize they're starting to run out of fuel. I'm trying to back up Moose, but then in here comes a Thunderbolt coming straight for my stuff. He's taking out my Strela 10 Ms, but uh, do manage to fire back, and it manages to escape. Then, yeah, that 
the Thunderbolt with those armor can be pretty annoying, but he basically stops me from being able to amphibious push across and try to secure here and help out uh, Moose. My Yak-141 got into a scuffle. Um, back over on the right, more action. U.S. Marines are holding off some VDV and VDV-90s. I'm spending that as a head. As you can see, there are just troops dotted everywhere. This is what I mean. It's just There's so much... Uh, Con contesting back and forth it's so easy to get around and behind troops and especially get, can, if it can continue on all the way around this region so lots of forest equals you got to be very thorough when you go through those areas so i refueled and rested up and i'm beginning to push again across with my amphibious troops pushing across the sea and they are turning back because Enemy seeing my amphibious push decides to bomb it to all hell. And so there goes my amphibious push. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's the problem about the floods. You gotta do the amphibious push early or not at all. I wasn't planning on Moose being across, so I kind of just hastily tried to get my troops together, but after that bombing, I, there was really no way that I could get to continue across. So unfortunately I could not come and help out Moose. I've got some the special sniper squad just scouting around, but that's basically the best that we can currently do. And uh, the Red 4 has used uh, Buratinos, it looks like, to heavily napalm the area. So they're just burning out the enemy as they're preparing to push across and try to secure Jot entirely. And the right is pushing forward quite well. Some Green Jackets are pushing forward, um, running into heavily... Uh, basically heavily well dug in force and the enemy starts beginning to see this and they're reacting uh to this push as well uh and uh yeah this right side is uh we're doing pretty well the right side is uh, being secured the middle is being cleared out um this left side is dying but it is bringing uh, attention to a bunch of force i bring a yak 38m which is 500 kilogram bombs Gets shot down quite well by the Eagles and doesn't seem to kill anything, unfortunately. So, yes, our entire push on the left does get cleaned up, and we just need to make sure they don't try to sneakily get back towards us, uh, try to attack us, and cross by helicopter or amphibious troops on the left. So, the thing about this riverway is that this means that the rest of the action is going to be focused on the middle to the right side of the map. As you can see, there's the enemy has control of this area here. They keep constantly sending stuff down. But we have control over on um, this region, and we are pushing quite well. Bubble Box spearheading this assault over here on the right. Try to go and take out Forrest. Uh, and uh, very good competition, though his troops is running out of fuel. This is quite a big map. Uh, light Riflemen are peppering this, these BTR-52s. So, again, the enemy is uh, has troops behind the enemy behind our lines now that we're pushing forward and this is quite mixed and essentially like i said uh sporadic and uh fighting everywhere going about i really don't know why i blanked out when i was trying to think of words to say my yak 141 goes down to the vast number of fighters it doesn't matter if it was a better fighter it's a sheer number of them we'll take out the yak 141 bombers are being brought in uh clearing out this area but um uh, um what is this alberto alberto and bubble box is uh taking quite a beating but they are definitely holding off the enemy if the enemy seems to be spending the vast majority of their forces here on the right this does distract them and from the uh napalm looks like red x uh triple uh or red 13 i guess is if you count that as Roman numerals, is pushing forward, and it looks like they're just about to secure Jot. So with the CV here, they just need to find the CV, and they'll be able to clear a head away. Lijuan are moving forward. They've got some tanks in reserve ready to help out. These uh, heavy-duty anti-tank ATGMs with 26 AP power, very scary to move uh, tanks into, but if you can move up these Lijuans and Lirens, which, ooh, taken out by, it looks like a... Uh, uh, Nighthawk and uh, Yucca Days, and unfortunately, that push does seem to fail. Over on the, here on the right, Bubble Box Forces is 
seems to be uh, cut off, but he is still pressing forward, trying to uh, still distract the enemy as much as possible. This does spread us out quite thin here on the right. I bring forward some Nona mortars to help out and uh, some Strela uh, 1Ms. These are not the most accurate uh, anti-air, but they are fast and amphibious, so they are pretty decent to have if you want to get them to a position quickly. Um, so it seems that they are allies B5 this area, and they're trying to convince everyone else to move forward. I have a Yak 38. He's making a bombing run. Don't know where. Revealed that there was quite a bit of AA, but he did mortar this piece up front. So that sh hopefully my allies does move forward. I was trying to help out. I have rebuilt here on the left. I've got some Sturms to start shooting at anything that might cross amphibiously. I've got the Strellas up. And uh, we are now well dug in on the left. So we shouldn't expect any kind of counter push on the left from the enemy. Meanwhile, the enemy is still focusing all their efforts here on the right. Bubble Box is pushing forward. Uh, Thunderbolts and other planes coming in. And unfortunately, Bubble Box, I know, is trying to get into Anna. But with this line here, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. But this is actually a trench. And no infantry can actually get across. In fact, I don't think any vehicles can get across. Only helicopters. They have to go all the way up here and try to cross from this river. So, unfortunately, these VDV, which I know was going to try to go and get behind the back line, will be unable to. So, sorry, Bubble Box. Um, I got the Strellas up in case they sent some more helicopters. Uh, here's some AH-1Ss. And uh, we're basically going skirmishing back and forth here on the right. Another Air Force uh, bombing run coming in from the uh, enemy team. We shoot down a couple of aircraft. But... Uh, uh, looks like our my Alex is just trying to dug in and consolidate before pushing forward. <clears throat> On the right, more bombing runs as the enemy tries to clear out everything that Bubble Box has. It's doing a pretty good job. And, oh no, Bubble Box lost all of his APCs due to some, uh, uh, some kind of infantry here. So I'm definitely going to want to try to rescue these, uh, these uh, supply trucks before the enemy realizes that he actually has them. So it's, it's very interesting. The enemy has this region all the way up here. They still have a foothold at the Jot, but with it raining rockets, it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be uh, there very much longer as long as our allies push soon. And uh, the enemy is doing the counter push with territorial militia. Now militia. Uh, are interesting. They, they're meant to soak up uh, shots, but it does not seem like the enemy has anything to go with these militias. And militia by themselves aren't very good, as you can see, they're being cut up quite quickly due to the fact that they have just a ancient gun and a very weak anti-tank rifle. Now I have an... I was bringing my 24 d but before I land, I guess, or I actually... I do land it first, but it is quite uh, fortunate that it lands and that now I'll be able to go and uh, help clear out this area. And as you can see, they try to do another bombing run, but our air defenses are way too strong on this side of the mountain. And something interesting is that if you, I believe, that if you have it on this side of the mountain, they anti-radiation missiles can't shoot at uh, radar AA until they get past the, the line of sight of the mountain and be able to shoot it then. So that kind of might give the advantage for Radar AA, but uh, uh, if the is they still will lose um, to a seed plane if the you need to still keep them off and ready to fire. I spent it as I'm moving up. They're basically trying to find, and there they are, the light rifleman 90s that's captured so many supply trucks. My Spetsnaz go and clear them out, and now I need to go hunt down for those supply trucks so that the enemy does not get them. The enemy is pushing on the left, which I am countering with uh, Moskaya Pakotas. BTR 90s are here in the back giving covering fire. Uh, and as my Mi 24D goes around with his very excellent uh, arsenal to be able to take out infantry at close range. And I try to sh uh, screen over here on the. Uh, basically, as we try to go and try to push into the enemy's dug in area. So this is our, our goal right here is to secure this. 
We finally managed to snipe the CV, and we are constantly... <laughs> look at that rocket artillery just... This is what happens in 10v10s, and everyone seems to have ro uh, napalm artillery, uh, rocket artillery, is that entire regions get uh, lit up into flame. So now, my all, Bubble and I, all our focus is here on the right. As you can see, we're tr still trying to push up. My Strela 1Ms are out of missiles. They don't have a lot. They're mainly meant to be fast, move in quickly, but they are pretty cheap for 30 uh, points each. So they're still pretty good. And now we need supplies. And I've got supplies here. My Spetsnaz hasn't had any luck finding those supply transports. So they probably took them and moved them to resupply the troops. So that is unfortunate. Another push uh, in the center. The enemy seems to have gotten another CV put in. But Afghansky, BUs, BMPTs. Lots of vehicles are moving forward. Those SMAs will be a problem. But if this BMPT can open up onto them. Uh, another bombing run. This is definitely what's been holding us back. All the anti-air that uh, all the aircraft that the enemy has. Uh, Iglas I put up here on the top of the mountain able to screen for aircraft and this longbow is here able to spot my Misgaia Pakotas and able to do quite a bit of damage as it's going to be able to open up with its hellfires. Mi-24D is trying to uh, has lopped off some Spetsnaz. I also have some Muskaya Pakotas here in the KA-29. And uh, I'm just moving forward trying to see uh, if there's any infantry. There's some US Marines and there is definitely some Air Force here as well. I do micro move my Muskayas out of the where the borders are. As I bring in more reinforcements of Iglas and uh, 1Ms and basically try to be able to shoot down the Longbow and any other aircraft that the enemy seems to surround us because I'm realizing looking throughout that the enemy is using lots and lots of aircraft so we need lots and lots of things to shoot down those aircraft so these ah1s's are retreating as my spetsnaz are going to try to clear out this u.s marine area there's obviously something here as it's firing some kind of auto cannon probably a lav or a bradley and what is it we don't know because it's shooting down everything uh, Iglas have scored a hit on something. I, I really want to know what this is uh, as that aircraft cr crashes into those militia. Sorry, militia. Um, I lost something up there, but come on. What is it? It was an LAV. So whatever that was, it was holding off with an LAV as I moved some T-55 AM tanks. They aren't the best tanks. I will be the first to admit them, but they come in the Marine deck and this they kind of limited on the marine decks uh, on terms of tanks, so this was the best that I could sort of do. Enemy is doing a good uh, counter push with AH-1S Cobras. They're going to try to move in for my T-55AMs, but if I can get my Iglas in position, to try to shoot them down. But no, it looks like they're going to be able to take out my tanks. But uh, Alberto does have some uh, Mi-24V with his uh, uh, anti-air radar uh, looks like there's some enemy right here it's bubble box moving back and forth it's BMPTs now BMPTs will definitely be able to clear up this force with their grenade launcher auto cannon and with VDV uh, 90 distracting them it basically be able to hold off the enemy here if it was lucky we caught that like I told you it's very easy to get behind enemy lines we are starting to secure both sides so this road is turning into a kill zone as the enemy is losing a lot of stuff as they're moving forward. A longbow is again moving forward, which doesn't last long as I do have plenty of Iglas set up to try to counter any helicopters. And now the enemy does seem to be put, uh, leaving the game. In the middle, my allies have managed to secure forward. So we now have Jot, the highly contested area with plus four points. So we are now starting to get a good lead in terms of points. Um, Planes are uh, skirmishing back and forth, not trying to get to the other side's air defenses. Uh, very nice bait, manages to put it into some Pong A2s. One aircraft does go down. Does the 27 uh, get out? It, it does get out. And the Megla M does take out some of the uh, anti-air of the enemy. As you can see, lots of enemy here on the right still. So we gotta definitely be careful on the right. And on the left, it looks like the enemy is kind of counter-pushing. Some infantry are moving up here. 
I'll uh, need to be, move up my Spetsnaz and Moskayas as I bring in reinforcements in terms of helicopters. And I'm bringing in, in reinforcements and helicopters a lot due to the fact that it is a very, very long way from the spawn point, and I need to get troops as quickly as possible. So that is probably why the enemy has a lot of aircraft. They know that they uh, they would need speed in order to get there. Um, it's just that the weakness is that if you have too many people all air, then all the enemy has to do is put a lot of air defenses, and they'll be able to shoot down everything possible. Now, territorials. Now, there's 40 territorials. Why just to go up against one of my Spetsnaz? with a little backup of my MI-24Ds, but as you can see, militias by themselves don't, aren't uh, the best. They're best uh, as a meat shield to just sort of uh, soak up any kind of fire from any other sources while your other more expensive stuff goes and actually clears it out. Even then, my Spetsnaz, known as the infantry killer, do a very good job taking out Canadian riflemen. Enemy is still trying to sneak out across here on uh, the right, but with so many helicopters and so many uh, infantry guarding this area, I think we've got the site well spotted. I sent a KA-29 to kind of scout to see what it was. He does see that there's indeed vehicles and such. And my Spetsnaz, panic and wounded, I am retreating him back where I'm hopefully going to resupply as I have... as the game ends! <laughs> so, uh, we actually, we did win that 40-minute uh, game. Uh, Bubble Box did pretty well. Did that massive push, he got well behind the enemy lines. If, if, if only he had known about that last little river trench area, he probably would have gotten to the enemy spawn and really wreaked havoc. Uh, I didn't do the best, and uh, that is expected. I was kind of playing with a handicap with the Marine deck. Uh, the Marine decks, um, they're not bad. Um, and they can't be played without uh, shipping lanes. Uh, the only difficulty with uh, marine decks is that there needs to be a little more uh, troops and variety in the marine decks. I do feel for them to be vi uh, viable in other games that don't have ships. Uh, and more nations need to actually have uh, uh, marine capabilities to the full extent. Uh, if you have any uh, question of what I mean by that, Try making a Canadian Marine deck and see the number of troops that you have available to create a Marine deck. And um, I believe that was is an answer sufficient to me as to why there aren't very many Marine decks being played about in the uh, war game. But uh, they're definitely fun. They, uh, the amphibious aspect definitely gives you a lot of uh, variety. If you built your Marine decks to be able to cross any river, any time, especially in heavily forested regions like that, then um, I believe that uh, Marine decks would be able to get a spot in the uh, in maps as long as, like I said, they have more variety and such. But uh, here's the kills, a lot of territorials and such. Most of my kills need to be coming from my Iglas, which is to be expected due to the amount of uh, aircraft the enemy has. And yes, I did lose quite a bit of stuff, but eh, you can't be... Uh, 100% and everything, and the whole purpose of this game was just to have fun. In 10v10s, you really are not going to know what's going to happen. You just basically play, have fun, and watch the mayhem happen. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, please do like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this uh, episode of Wargame Red Dragon, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.